anyone has a question they would like to ask. You know, there's something I talk about a lot that I think is important, you know, and that is, you know, we gather together here as a group of people, people really in many different countries and uh, Zoom makes it possible for us to come together. But each person is here to build their own individual connection with God, higher energy. And all that's provided in these classes is the, nour the nourishment, the energy to do this. But the ultimate result is that, you know, we come and we have these classes for an hour and a half or so, but the rest of the day, we all have to live with ourselves. And what do we take away from the classes? Do we take away the energy? Does the chakra system get more developed? You know, can we live every day with a quiet mind, an open heart, grounded inside? You know, and if we can't live that way every day, and most people can't, you know, it's just teaching us that we need to work deeper on ourselves. You know, that we can build inside ourselves a system that can keep the mind quiet, keep the emotions quiet, keep us grounded and centered inside. And we have the capacity to do this. You know, so the little, you know, emotional problems, the neurotic problems, this, the anxieties, the fears, they're just a reminder. They're not negative things. They're just a reminder that they, that each and every one of us has to work deeper on ourselves. And we need things to remind us. You know, it's like my teacher used to say that a pearl in an oyster comes because there's an irritation, you know, and we all have irritations. Do we turn them into pearls or do we get crazy? So they remind us to do the inner work that is so essential to eventually arrive at a place where the mind is quiet, the heart is open, we're grounded, we're able to use our sexual energy, you know, in a creative and healthy way inside, you know, and, and we really elevate our consciousness, you know, to the highest levels of what it means to live here as a human being. And that's what this is about, that's all it's about, you know, elevating one's consciousness to a place where we can live here, you know, with our hearts open. We can be happy people. So, you know, so don't think that anything is negative. Everything is one's teacher. And if you begin to see the world that way, then you don't get wrapped up in when you have a bad moment, you have a little depression, you have a little unhappiness. You know, it's your teacher. It's telling you, hey, you got to work deeper. You got to continue to build a system to where you can transform depression into grounding and an open heart. You have the capacity, the strength inside to do that. And that's really what meditation, I mean, look, what I teach is not really meditation. I mean, for a better word, we call it meditation. It's inner work. It's using the tools that we are born with, the mind, the breath, our will, our needs, the chakra system, to build a system that enables us to eventually live here as a happy person, with the heart open, with love, with forgiveness. Forgiveness is a very big thing, especially having to forgive ourselves. And then from learning how to forgive ourselves, we can forgive all the indiscretions of other people. And certainly there are enough indiscretions to make anybody crazy, unless you have a system inside that is capable of staying rooted and balanced and open and being able to deal with all the nonsense that goes on in the world. It's two o'clock. Does anyone have a question they would like to ask? And it's wonderful not to spend one's time beating oneself up. 
<laughs> not being worthwhile, you know? We're all worthwhile. We're born here to be worthwhile. We don't come to the earth to be unhappy. We come here to have wonderful lives. And I think the first step to having that kind of life is to recognize that whatever takes place is one's teacher. Not negative. It's not there to get you. It's not there to make you. It's your teacher telling you exactly what your condition is inside and that you got to do something about it. And we have a meditation practice that truly can enable us to do something about it. It's strong, it's powerful, it's deep, it deals directly with the chakra system. It uses the tools, the mind, the breath to develop the chakra system. And then we have to use it consciously. We have to make, take the benefits of what it has to offer us as human beings. Th does anyone have a question they would like to ask? Yes, so. Sometimes when I'm breathing, I'm feeling that I'm building tensions. You know, it's like very intensive, like I'm going to explode. Well, and then because, I'm you know, because I'll tell you frankly, the answer to that is simple. You cannot open the heart chakra by just breathing there. You see, you have to have gratitude. You can't open the third chakra, the hara, by just breathing there. If you're not, if your mind isn't focused there, and that chakra doesn't open like a lotus flower. If you breathe there, you're gonna make it tighter. So there are elements that have to be, you know, exist inside you before you take the breath into the heart. The first one is gratitude. You will never feel that pressure if your heart is open and there's gratitude. And all the air, will, the, the air, the breath will do will go into this energy. It's life you're taking into the heart chakra. And it will expand that chakra. As you inhale, you're taking in life. You bring it into the third chakra. You will expand it. But it has to be open to receive it. And the way that you open it is you bring your attention. You be sure your attention is there. And then, then you won't have that problem. And all it is is gratitude. All it is is getting the mind centered here. You know, having a need to do it, the will to work against your tension, your problems, your anxieties, to get yourself centered, to use the breath to open, to ex not to open, but to expand the chakra system. I mean, there's a little, you know, I always teach this little mantra called so hum. You know, when you inhale, you say so. You say this to yourself. When you exhale, hum. And so hum means I am that. I am one with everything. That is really what breath is. I am one with everything. So if you have gratitude, the heart opens, I, you're taking life in. To the heart center, it will expand the heart center. When you exhale, is that you are letting go of a part of yourself, you're surrendering a part of yourself. It's a very simple exercise that you could use that would really help, you know, to get the chakra system expanded inside. And it's not, you know, look, it's a Hindu mantra, but it's not, I mean, in the, in the Old Testament, Moses, I am that I am, you know, and there's the burning bush. And if you want to read it in a different way, it's really, I am that, and that is activating Kundalini, the burning bush. It could be read that way also. The pathway to God, which is the Kundalini force. The, the, does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Yes, Flora. 
I will try to um, make me understand. Um, does, me? It mean, um, does it mean everything we have experienced in our life, uh, which is what's negative from our family and everything? Everything is your teacher. Your family is your teacher. And when they do things you don't like, you have to learn from them instead of being angry at them. Instead of being upset that they do these things. They're your teacher. They're teaching you what you have to do to get stronger. Your job is your teacher. The people you work with are all your teachers. And if you begin to see life that way, it becomes a whole different way of acting. We're no longer angry at life because it is constantly teaching us what we have to do to grow. The politics in the world, the economics in the world, you know, what are the, I mean, I think that, <clears throat> you know, money and relationships probably create 98% of all the tension in the world. You know, the fear of economics and relationships with family, with, you know, marriages and, you know, all the, it creates so much tension. And the reason it creates tension is we always think people are supposed to function the way we think they're supposed to function and nobody does. So there's all this tension, but if we just listen to them and learn from them and let them teach us, suddenly all that tension disappears. And we can accept that everybody is different. Everybody is different. Please try and sit still. Hello? Try and sit still. Everybody is different and everybody has something important to teach us about ourselves, what we need to do to grow. It's a hard thing to learn, but it really is an essential thing to learn because then we can let the world be. You know, we don't have to dictate the way this world is supposed to function. We can let it be. It just is God's world. It's not our world. We don't know better than how things manifest around us. And we can learn from them and grow because of them and develop ourselves to where we can simply let life be. I mean, the Beatles in the 60s sang about let it be, you know? It's true, let it be. And life has to be because we cannot determine what is gonna happen every day in life. We can only learn from it and grow because of it. And it enables us to then truly be a vehicle for higher energy and to interact with the world that way. And to think that the tension is going to go away, it's never going to go away. There's always going to be something to come to bother us, always. And as I said earlier, we need that irritation to make a pearl. We are the pearl. But we need that irritation because it makes us go deeper inside to grow. We need pressure on us. You know, my teacher always talked about a diamond being the pressure of 50,000 years of the earth. You know, we are the diamond. We need pressure, but pressure by itself will destroy people. But if we work inside and grow because of it and use it to build ourselves, that pressure becomes a positive thing instead of a negative thing. And then you begin to realize there is no positive or negative. There's just energy. And what we see is positive and negative is the way we see the world in our minds. I mean, I, I saw a movie the other day called Russia Moan. I don't know if you know this movie, but it's a Japanese movie. And it's about a man who's being tried for murder. And then three or four different people tell the story of what happened. And there isn't one person who tells the same story. You know, everybody has a different, you know, reality. And I think it was kind of a wonderful movie. You know, and that's the way it is. No matter who sees something, you're going to hear a different reality. So we got to accept life and let it be our teacher instead of being something that we determine the way it's supposed to be. Because none of us know. Nobody knows. And we can't fix what can't be fixed, because mostly we spend our time trying to fix illusion, maya. All of this dreamlike world that exists outside ourselves, 
that politicians and philosophers and theologians have been trying to fix since the beginning of the time. And look how crazy the world still is. We've got to fix ourselves. We fix ourselves, suddenly we see a different world. <laughs> it's incredible how simple the whole thing is. We fix ourselves, the world becomes different. We accept people as they are, not the way we want them to be. And we learn from them instead of being upset and angry with them. And there are some people that are very hard to accept. The people have a lot of problems, but they're all our teacher. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, well, God bless you all. Thank you for being here for, you know, as I tell you every class, when I talk about these things, I learn from them too. It's not me talking, it's this energy that comes through that talks. And it's not only hopefully teaching all of you, but it's teaching me as well. And I just have an enormous amount of gratitude for people being here and doing this work. And, you know, that I can spend my time growing this way and sharing what I, my life is with all of you. So bless you all. And there'll be a class again on Thursday. I, I forget the days, you know, <laughs> on Thursday. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody there. And once again, if you know people that want to come to these classes, they're all welcome, you know, and uh, just have them get in touch with me. Or if they live in Norway, Skenda can show them the exercise. If they live in Israel, Ellie can show them the exercise. And uh, they're welcome to come. And then if you're new, just let me have your email address so I can put you on the mailing list so you can be invited directly. Okay, so God bless and everyone. I will see you all on Wednesday. Ciao. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye.